Listen to me, please. Yep. You missionaries that are going places. Thank you, brother. Man. You may go to a place that there is a church in that community that is a, I mean, everybody thinks it's the world's best thing in the world. That, that, they, may give, they may give food to the hungry. They may clothe the poor. They may do all kinds of good. And this doesn't go with that. I'm not against that. But when they preach false doctrine right. and, and, and promote things contrary to this Bible, then you have an obligation to tell the truth and then know when you do tell the truth that persecution is going to happen. That will blackball you in that community is what's going to happen. And it'll take the hand of God as it would have if you'd never said anything to save sinners and bring them to that place where you're trying to do a work for God. It's all God anyway. Like I tell you, they'll blackball you and they'll try to run you down and they'll make you look like you're an idiot and an imbecile and to those other people. But don't let them keep you from it. That's part of the persecution. Every preacher that preaches the truth is outlawed in this community. You can go anywhere you want to. It don't matter. Yes, but they may tolerate you. They see him at Walmart and he's in a meeting somewhere. They may tolerate him and shake his hand. But you know they don't like him. Right. And you know that they wouldn't call him to lead in silent prayer if they had to. They're just not going to do it. Now listen to me. You know why these guys stay booked all the time? All the time? Because they don't say nothing. I don't know how to say it, brother. I don't know how to say it. But there's a man. Let me ask something. These, these big time preachers. Do you ever hear them suffer any persecution? No. Do you ever hear, boy, they run from the feathers over there and half the crowd left while they was preaching? Yeah. You ever heard them saying, oh, I'm telling you what, I, they caused the biggest ruckus over there. That preacher said he'd never have them back. Oh, no, I don't ever hear that. They're booked next year before they get through this one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. You know why? Because they won't have, they won't have, they won't have, they don't have what it takes to suffer the persecution. And where are they going at too? Now, now I want to tell you something. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying when those stones were hitting Paul in the head that that was fun and enjoyable. I'm not saying when you go to a place and you see, see certain people, they go around the, the opposite way so they don't have to meet you and greet you. I'm not saying that's fun. It's not fun. It's not pleasure. And it's not, it's not something you would, you would hope that would happen. But if you listen to what Paul said to Timothy, he said to Timothy, those things are just going to happen if yeah. you live God in Christ Jesus. Yeah. If you're willing to bear the reproach, if you're willing to do what God has said, what am I telling you? It is absolutely a necessity that we live godly, but let us know if we do, we're going to suffer persecution. And... Matthew's Gospel, chapter number 5. Look there for just a moment, if you would, please. I'm just about to. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5. So, preach what you do. I'm trying to prepare these men yes, sir. and help them to understand. I'm not saying you don't understand it. You know everything I've said tonight. I'm just trying to bring it back to, to your mind what you're going to, what you're going to uh, face and what you're going to have to endure. But Paul didn't say, after that first time, I'll never shut my mouth. That's wrong with all the choice. That's the next place he went to he did it again. And the next place he went to he did it again. And he just kept on doing it. And he just kept bringing up, kept on bringing persecution. Everywhere that he went. Matthew chapter 5. Look what Jesus said about it. Verse number 10. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil uh, uh, against you falsely now. For my sake. Now they might say a lot about us, but if it's something about sin, something, I pray to God it's false. Amen. He said, he said, verse number 12, rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. I tell you, we're no better than the men that went before us. I tell you, persecuted they are. But yet we want to live in a good life of Christian living that, that I mean, one more. You hear one more thing from across town. One brother so and so said, Y'all should be out there on the street. And it'll knock around, they won't go for three months. My soul. My soul. 
Would you please, would you please realize tonight? Now, it's not just for preachers, it's for everybody. It says all that will have gone to Christ Jesus. Right. That's not just a preacher. But he's addressing Timothy here. But let Timothy know. This is the, you're no stranger to this. You're not in this by yourself. Everybody else that lives God in Christ Jesus, they'll suffer persecution too. Yeah. Everybody. Everybody. Now in our scripture text, if you would please look back, 2 Timothy, and I'll be done. 2 Timothy chapter number 2. In 2 Timothy chapter number 2, Paul is writing here to Timothy. And, and boy, he's saying some wonderful stuff. I'm telling you, he just he just think, saying things. He's warning a little bit about uh, difficulties and, and about devils, you know, and all these different things. But he comes down to verse number 11. Now that we've seen it in this context, he said, Persecutions, afflictions, uh, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured. But the Lord delivered me, uh, delivered, uh, but, but out of them all, the Lord delivered me. Yea. And all that will of God in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. I think we have got this mental concept that just simply going to church, tithing, you know, back to the church when it needs to be, doing different things uh, for the preacher and, and, and uh, you know, trying to, trying to have devotions at night when we have a chance, you know, and, and different things like that. We think we have a mental concept that that's all there is to it. And because of that, if you do every bit of that, can I ask you something besides just a little bit of verbal snigger or somebody saying it's a little something? What have we really suffered? Right. Right. I don't see how we can get away from the truth of that verse number 12. If we are obedient to the scriptures, we shall suffer persecution. Gentlemen, as you go to your places of service, wherever it may be, Christian, as you live in your community or, and, and, and go about your daily activities, may we not be ashamed to speak up and tell the truth Amen. of God. You say, preacher, if I say that, don't I like it? Don't you think 